Hi, I'm Jackie Partridge. I'm an artist working in Wellesley, Ontario, and I'm going to show you how to paint yourself a color wheel. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the basics of color theory, and this is going to help you kind of understand how colors work, and it will help you make better paintings. So we're going to be using acrylic paints. I'm using a brand called Riotech, which is a great student quality brand at a low affordable price. I'm going to be painting on a canvas board. You can paint on a surface like a thicker watercolor paper or a cardstock paper is fine. Um, or if you have a multimedia sketchbook, you can use pages from those. You'll also need a pencil and a large circular lid from like a margarine container or a Cool Whip container or something like that. You'll need a rag as well as a cup of water and a brush. You can use any size of brush that you have, maybe something that's more of a medium size. This is a round brush and it comes to a nice point. It's a size number six. Again, use the size or type of brush that you have available to you. You'll also need your palette of paint. So you'll need some yellow, some red, some blue, some white, and a little bit of black. So I'm using ruby and red, primary yellow, titanium white, cobalt blue, and Mars black. Again, use the colors and the brand of paint that you have available to you. All right, let's get started. All right, so first we're gonna start um, with our color wheel. So you're going to take your circular lid and just put it um, somewhere on your page. I'm gonna put mine towards the top of the canvas board and in the center. And then with your pencil, you're just going to trace around the lid so that you have a nice circle drawn. And again, I'm using canvas board, but you can use a watercolor paper or a thick cardstock or whatever you have. So once you're done tracing it, you'll have a nice circle laid out that is a nice, perfect circle. So I'm using two brushes, one for painting and one for mixing my colors so that I don't dirty the colors as much and I don't have to clean my brush in between when I'm mixing colors. So you're gonna start with your color wheel by starting with your primary colors. So I'm gonna make sure this brush is nice and clean, which it is, and I'm gonna start with the red. So I'm using a rubine red, which is a really close red um, to a primary red. And I'm just going to put this red at the top of my color wheel and it doesn't need to be super perfect, it doesn't need to be um, a really nice shape if you want. You could make it into a circle or into a rectangle, but as long as you have a nice kind of section of red, that's good. Um, and this will just indicate that this is our primary red. So I'm using it straight from the tube or the container of paint and I'm painting my section. And then you can always label it uh, with your pencil, label it red. So next I'm going to clean this off and dip it in our water and swirl it around, rub it off on the rag so that all the red is off. And I'm gonna use my next color, making sure that this brush is nice and clean. So the next primary color that I'm going to use is yellow. Again, straight from the tube or the container. And when you're placing your primary colors, you're gonna kind of create a triangle with them. So I'm gonna place the yellow right here. And again, I'm just going to paint a kind of rectangle shape. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is just about understanding how to mix colors. 
And with my pencil, I'm just going to label it yellow. Okay, then I'm gonna clean off my brush, swirl it in water, rub it on the rag so it's nice and clean, and go for my blue. This is a cobalt blue. I'm going to create a nice triangle shape. So I'm gonna paint my blue over here in this section, paint a nice rectangle block um, so that I can just show that this is a primary color. With my pencil, I'm just going to label it blue. Again, I'm going to um, clean off my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some purple. And purple is a secondary color. And basically a secondary color is two primary colors mixing together. So I'm going to take some of So once I have my purple, which is an even amount of red and an even amount of blue, then I'm gonna place it right in the middle of my red and blue section. So this is our secondary color. We have all of our primary colors painted, red, yellow, and blue. So in between the red and the blue, I'm painting purple, and I can just label it purple or violet is really the same color. So beside the purple and red, if I take the color that I already mixed and I add a little bit of extra red to it, I am going to get a tertiary color. And a tertiary color is a secondary color, which is purple, mixed with the primary color. So all I'm doing is I'm taking the purple that I've already made and I'm adding just a little bit of red to it. And I'm painting that color in between the purple and the red. So when I label this color, it is called red purple. So the primary color is always first in the name. Then I'm going to take that purple that I made, this original secondary purple, and I'm just going to add a little bit of blue to it to create another tertiary color. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue add it to that purple and I'm going to get a blue purple. So it's the same purple, I've just added blue in it. I'm just going to paint this section. And then when I label this section with my pencil, I'm just going to label it blue purple. So then I'm going to clean off my brushes, make sure they're nice and clean, and wipe them off on the rag so that they're not dirty. And I'm going to paint my next secondary color. So the secondary color that I'm choosing is going to be orange. So I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow first and then a little bit of red. And I'm going to put my orange in between the yellow and the red. So this is our secondary color orange. And I can label it orange. You 
give it another coat. Perfect. So now with the orange that I already have, I'm going to make the tertiary color. So I'm going to mix the orange that I already have and add some extra yellow to it to make the tertiary color of yellow orange, which is going to go right in the middle. So I'm going to take some extra yellow and add it to the orange that I've already made to make our nice yellow orange. And then when I label it, I'm going to write yellow orange. Now I still have some of that original orange that I made. So now I'm going to add some extra red to it to get another tertiary color, which is red orange. And labeling that red orange. So now I'm going to do the same with the yellow and blue down here. So first start just by cleaning your brushes, making sure all the red is off of it so that we can paint our last secondary color. So yellow and blue mixed together make green. So just make sure your brush is nice and clean. I'm going to pull some yellow and pull a little bit of blue with another brush to make our green. And again, I'm using an even amount to make our green. And painting the green in the center, in between the blue and the yellow. And I'm just going to label that green. Now for our tertiary color, so I already have some green mixed. I'm just going to add some of the yellow that's beside it to make our yellow green which is kind of like a lime green. So you can clean your brushes off. So that is our completed color wheel. So there's some things that you can notice about the color wheel which are pretty useful in terms of your painting. So across from the primary color red, we have green. So green is a complementary color of red. So it's directly across the color wheel. Same with yellow. Across the color wheel from yellow is purple. So yellow is purple's complementary color. And then again with blue, across the color wheel from blue is orange. So orange is a complementary color of blue. So this is really good for um, painting and creating a sense of unity. So again, 
whatever color is across the wheel is going to really pair well and pair nicely together. So the colors that are side by side on the color wheel, that term is called analogous colors. So these colors kind of go well together. So for example, red, red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, they all kind of go together. They're in the same kind of color family. These colors, yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red, um, red, orange, red, red, purple, these are all kind of warm colors, this half of the color wheel. Over here on this half of the color wheel, we have cool colors like purple, blue, purple, blue, blue, green, green, and yellow, green. So the cooler colors can create this sense of calm or sense of freshness, whereas the warmer colors can create a sense of warmth or a sense of energy on the canvas. Uh, so we also have, not only do we have complementary colors like red and green, yellow and purple, blue and orange, we also have split complementary colors. So if I have red, two colors that would be a split complementary would be blue, green, and yellow, green. So to do a split complementary, you're just blocking off the color that's directly across and choosing the colors on either side. So split complementary or a complementary colors can be good color schemes for choosing your painting. 